Back in 2015, Tesla switched on the autopilot hardware it had been putting in all of its new cars made since October 2014 by pushing version 7 of its vehicle software to all cars in its fleet via an over-the-air update. At the time, Autopilot, Tesla's chosen name for its semi-autonomous driver assistance features and active safety systems, was pretty rudimentary in its capabilities. And since then, with further refinement in Tesla's Autopilot hardware and software, it's become more and more capable. The latest version of Autopilot has rolled out to customers' cars includes Navigate on Autopilot, a feature that makes it possible in most situations for Tesla's fully equipped fleet to drive from on-ramp to off-ramp and beyond with little input from the driver. Lane changes no longer require driver approval, something that was the case until fairly recently, and now Tesla's autopilot system can even recognize and respond to a red stoplight, warning the driver to take over immediately if there's a red stoplight ahead. To date, however, while Tesla's autopilot system is very much in the uncanny valley where people assume it's fully autonomous, it hasn't yet reached a point of complete hands-off driver disengaged autonomy as defined by the SAE as level 5 autonomous driving. At least it hasn't in customers' cars, but as Tesla detailed in a special investor event today, it's been working on its own ground-up hardware for autopilot use. And when I say ground-up, I mean everything from the chipset upwards. And says Tesla, it'll be ready to enable a full robo-taxi service by the end of next year. Unlike the standard Tesla reveal event where Tesla CEO Elon Musk takes to the stage cheered on by a select audience of Tesla owners, investors and staff, today's event focused less on show and more on the nitty gritty of what Tesla's been working on. The result? A deep dive into a fully redundant Tesla designed and built self-driving computer that Tesla says can achieve a total of 144 trillion operations per second, thanks to a custom processor design, neural network accelerator design, and a design philosophy which focuses exclusively on Tesla's needs. Using less than 100 watts of power, the fully assembled self-driving unit fits between the firewall and glove box in all of Tesla's vehicles and has been installed into every new Model S and Model X built in the last month, and every new Tesla Model 3 built in the last 10 days. The deep dive presentation, meant for investors more than fans, started with a deep dive into the actual chip design of the self-driving computer by Pete Bannon. Bannon joined Tesla in 2016 from Apple, and if you're into hardware engineering, you should probably go and watch his part of the event after this video, because I'm not going to be able to do it justice when it comes to hardware knowledge. After getting a rundown of the hardware, we heard from Andre Kapathy, head of AI at Tesla. And he and his team are responsible for taking the data from each camera on a Tesla and both interpreting it and acting on it. Their prime goal, visual recognition. Like the hardware briefing, the AI briefing was pretty in-depth and detailed how Tesla goes about teaching the AI system how to interpret what it sees, annotating random images captured from the fleet to show Tesla's vehicles how to correctly interpret things. The more annotated data Tesla shows its AI, the more accurate it becomes. And we're talking about millions of images. We were also given a peek into Tesla's own simulators, but as Tesla detailed, the real world is a better teacher than a simulator. In a slight dig towards NVIDIA and other companies which focus a lot on virtual reality simulations to train their systems, Elon Musk noted that the real world is just too crazy and unpredictable to simulate in the virtual world. Quote, in simulation, you're essentially creating your own homework, said Musk. The real world is very weird. It has millions of corner cases. If someone can produce a self-driving simulation that can mimic the real world, it would be a monumental achievement. Like all other computer vision systems, Tesla has a complete iterative process designed to continually improve the machine learning, using the power of the fleet to identify specific situations, develop strategies for it, and then test if the software is right in shadow mode 
which, if you're not sure, means that the software and hardware is running code that sits in the background and makes sure that it's all correct in its predictions before it's then pushed to everyone's car as a future active update that results in the car actually doing whatever it needs to. During Tesla's presentation, Tesla CEO Elon Musk reiterated his belief that LiDAR wasn't a suitable solution for Tesla's autonomous technology. Quote, LiDAR is a fool's errand, he said. Anyone who relies on it is doomed. Doomed. Instead, we were told Tesla's machine learning should be accurately able to predict where lane markings were, even if they weren't visible due to snow or other poor weather and road conditions. Similarly, Musk said, high precision GPS mapping and location is dangerous, adding that computer vision should be the primary form of locating the car and responding to the world around it. His thoughts echo that of Carpathy, who noted that we humans don't shoot lasers out of our eyes for depth perception. At least most of us. Vision is enough. We finished off the trio of speakers with Stuart Bowers, who discussed some of the wider points of Tesla's autopilot software so far. Already, he said, Tesla's Navigate on autopilot has achieved 70 million miles. Additionally, Bowers said, so far, 9 million successful lane changes have been logged by Tesla's vehicles. This has meant that Tesla's neural net has been able to learn a whole lot about how to successfully execute safe lane changes, and it's become more and more accurate as a consequence. It's because of this that Tesla has been able to push forward the update to navigate on autopilot to enable the no confirmation on lane changes. So far, 100,000 automated lane changes are happening a day, and Bowers says the speed at which Tesla's software is learning and iterating is accelerating, thanks to all of the massive amount of data Tesla is acquiring from its fleet of vehicles every day. With all of the heavy engineering out of the way, Elon took the stage again to detail what Tesla hopes to be able to do over the next 12 months. Refreshing our minds on some of the things that Tesla has promised in the past and delivered on, although Elon did acknowledge that Tesla is very often late on its goals, <clears throat> Musk then laid out Tesla's vision for the future as made possible by Tesla's autopilot system. This year, he said, Tesla would be what he termed, quote, feature complete with self-driving, meaning complete hands-off operation. While he didn't place that in terms of SAE autonomous levels, I'd guess he means probably a level four or a level five. By the end of next year, however, he said, Tesla would enable its robo-taxi service, that is, pending regulatory approval. And in two or so years, Musk says Tesla will be producing vehicles without either steering wheels or pedals. As those vehicle parts become surplus to requirements, Musk said the cost of producing vehicles will further fall, along with sticker prices. Acknowledging that approval may take a little longer and it would be different in each market, Musk noted that Tesla's first autonomous vehicle technology to gain permission to be used on a wide scale may be the platooning technology as planned for the Tesla Semi. I'm guessing that's because with platooning, there's still a single driver who remains in control of the platoon, or at least supervises autonomous operation, while the other vehicles behind simply follow the truck in front. At a cost point, Musk noted, Tesla's cars were built and designed to offer at least 1 million miles of use. And when Tesla switches on its Tesla network, which will allow owners of Tesla cars to make money off their vehicles when they're not being driven by their owner, Tesla says we'll see a cost per vehicle for a widespread robo-taxi service become incredibly inexpensive. While Tesla will rely on its customers to sign up for its new Tesla network, Musk said that in areas where there weren't enough privately owned Teslas as part of the network already, it would simply produce cars and put them in service in those areas to ensure enough coverage. While Musk skirted over the exact economics of this, he did claim that a robo-taxi could be operated at a cost of around 18 cents per mile today, netting a gross profit per car per year, assuming an average mileage of 90,000 miles per annum, of $30,000. The cost to operate will drop down even further. If that sounds very impressive, you'd be right, it is. But even if Tesla has the technology and is ready to push out with a fully autonomous, hands-off autopilot, it's going to take a while to get regulatory buy-in. 
even in the US, which has tried several times to get self-driving legislation off the ground, things are very slowly moving indeed. And without a buy-in from governments, Tesla's plans are just that. Plans. Bringing the AI and machine learning together with advanced neural nets may feel like child's play for the most Silicon Valley of automakers. But Elon and Tesla's engineers have to do something that's a lot harder. Convince legislators, politicians and safety advocates that its technology is ready for the world. And that's a very, very big challenge indeed. It's also got to convince car owners around the world that the one thing that most of them are currently reluctant to do should be done. Share their car with other people they don't know, or at least convince enough Tesla owners to agree to let their car to be used for Tesla's robo-taxi network for the trend to catch on. And right now, I'm not sure a lot will. Cars are sadly too personal. It's not impossible, but there's going to be a lot of hard work ahead from Tesla to make sure that that will happen. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on a single episode. And if you'd like to support the show, there are three ways you can do that in the notes below. And don't forget too that we've just launched some great new t-shirts in the store for you all to buy, including our Tesla Evolved shirts and our Evolved plug shirts. Buy one, support the show and help us continue to make great content. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until that point, keep evolving.